Now this example is a continuation of the previous example in which we had these three questions and with the three questions I had these three responses and of course what we did is we had this little graphic here that we used to help us be able to determine the sample space. Well you don't necessarily have to make a graphic though I do endorse it it's always good it's always good to make some sort of representation so you can have some clarity on what the problem is addressing. But another technique is a very common technique called a tree diagram. And a tree diagram is a way of making this schematic of these branches that show what all the uh, responses could be. And each one of the quote-unquote branches of the tree would represent some sort of action that may occur. So I'm going to put down here maybe the letter R for response because we want to respond to these three questions. So you could see for the first question, obviously I could I, I have three possible uh, responses, agree, disagree, and undecided. So I make these branches and I go ahead and I label it like that. I have an agree, I have a disagree, and of course then I have an undecided. Those are the possible ways that I could answer the first question here. So I'm maybe just going to go up here, I'm going to label that as number one. If I was to answer agree to the first question, I still have agree, disagree, or undecided that I could answer for the second question. So I continue with my branches. Agree, disagree, and undecided. If I answer disagree on the first question, I still have agree, disagree that I could answer on the second one. So I'll do the same thing. Finally, if I answer undecided on the first question, I still have agree, disagree, or undecided for the second question. So you can see I can agree, 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 disagree, agree or be undecided, disagree, agree, disagree, 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 undecided. So it's the same idea except we're just using a tree diagram rather than this fancy graphic. So we could go ahead and we could label this up here number two. This is question two. And by the time we get to question three here, the pattern will continue. If I answered agree on the second question, I could still answer agree, disagree, or undecided, respond that way on the third question. So I continue. Agree, disagree, or undecided. And this pattern continues. I could agree on the first question, disagree, and I still have three responses for the third one. So this pattern continues. So we'll do that. We'll go ahead and we'll fill out the rest of this tree diagram. So as you can see, we can then go ahead and label this as three. Those are the responses for question three. So a tree diagram makes nice, uh, a nice convenient tool to help us build our sample space. And you'll notice that if you go ahead and you add up the last column here, it's going to come out to 27 different responses, which is what we concluded from the previous example.